We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. We bring you the latest in the teaching of His Glory Ministry, the Word of His Glory. Today we are going to be wrapping up our study in the book of Hebrews. Again, it's my conjecture that the Hebrew, Hebrews was written by Paul. Uh, regardless, it's God breathed. It's for our edification. It's for our doctrine. It's for our learning. And uh, the, the author is going to teach us a very so several very valuable lessons here in Hebrews 13, some that you may have known of, heard of before about angels being within us. And um, so we're going to really look at what the author is trying to tell us in these end days. It's all about love, following Christ and his biblical teaching, that there's going to be strange teachings, there's going to be cults, there's going to be de denominations, there's going to be doctrine that are not biblical and do not run to them. There's only one purity in this world, and that is the living Christ through his living word. And that is exactly what the author is going to state here in uh, uh, chapter 13 of the book of Hebrews. Uh, before we uh, get any further, as we always do, the true teacher in the living word of God is not a praetorium, it's not a pope, it's not a cardinal, it's not a minister, it's not a, rever a, a, a reverend. It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there for us. The Holy Spirit indwells in us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to show us the word of the Lord. Praise his name. So when you're reading the Bible, start with praying to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will give you the spiritual wisdom that can only God, come from God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Man cannot give you the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Man cannot give you the interpretations of what the word of the Lord is. Remember, Jesus says it's as simple as a child, but the only way to get that simplicity is in having the, the humbleness and the love of a little child, the innocence of a child, the open of heart of a child. But check the scriptures to make sure it's, it, it is accurate is what uh, it says in the, the book of Acts. Our next study uh, on um, our Thursdays, Thursdays have been Hebrews for the last uh, 13 weeks. This is the 13th week of our study in Hebrews. We are going to start the Acts of the Apostles, the book of Acts. So that will be coming next on Thursdays. Okay, we have the Holy Spirit with us. Let's get into the Word of God uh, in Hebrews 13. Let brotherly love continue. Agape. The, the agape love of the Most High God. Love is the central piece to all things in the, in, in the Word of God. It is wrapped up in love, as Jesus says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, those are the two greatest commandments. And all the prophets and the Torah are wrapped in love, is what Jesus says. It's all about love. If we're not doing it in love, we're doing it wrong. If we're doing it for rules and works, we're doing it wrong. It's by grace and love. By grace and love in Jesus Christ, that allows us to want to do things for his purpose and his glory. That's a lot different than trying to earn your way. I saw a, uh, a posting in Liberia this morning. Uh, as, you, as many of you know, we have a His Glory Liberia. Uh, and uh, how there was a pastor who was writing out receipts to people. And he was delivering them from a certain sin for a, a, an X number of dollars. That's not what the Lord wants us to do. That is absolutely wrong, 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 wrong. There was a pope in, um, I think it was 11th or 12th century. There's been several popes that d have done this. I believe it was Pope Innocent. And how, what a pun this is, Pope Innocent. Um, but don't take me, that, that was the right pope. But uh, Dave Hunt's uh, The Woman That Rises the Beast sh shows these uh, atrocities done by a pope. But anyway, the pope was uh, selling sins. So that if a certain number of dollar you could uh, you you could get a cleanse from uh, murder or adultery or whatever your sin was, he put a dollar amount so that the church could make money off the sins and they would give him a certificate saying your sins are are set free because uh, you came to the pope and the murder is done. And they took it a step further. Not only did they do that from a spiritual sense, but they worked with the local authorities, the the government, to say if you committed murder that the civil, the, the civil leaders of the city couldn't charge you with murder because the Pope trumped them. Pope is a man. God is forever through his son, Jesus Christ. And we learn his word and we obey his word, not man. And that's what the book of Hebrews here in 13 is warning us. Do not go down the path of false teaching because every time you peel it back and you look at these teachings, and you say, where is this in the Bible? It's not in the Bible. It's of Satan. 
And not only is it of the Bible, it's a man who's changed things over and over in the centuries. And the Hebrews author is warning us before these things happen, what's going to happen in the church. As we taught in the, the parable of the mustard seed, and Jesus talks about the parable of the mustard seed, the smallest mustard seed is like the kingdom of, kingdom of God. It grows up to be the biggest tree and the birds of the air come in and, and they land and they nest in the branches is what the parable says. And we think of that in Sunday school and we think of that in the teaching of the gospel. Oh, well, that's a beautiful story. But inside that, it's not a beautiful story. What it's saying is that the church was going to be attacked and has always been attacked from within. The, ch the mustard seed represents the church. The church is growing from a little seed of Christ to be this big church. But the birds are always in expositional constancy when they're, ge when they're a generic. They're of the evil one. He comes and nests where? Inside the branches of the church. So that's where the false teaching is going to be coming from inside the church. So this is our truth. If it is not in the word of God, we do not trust it from any man's teaching anywhere. I don't care who they are. It's only the living word of God. Paul tells us in, that in Acts 17, 11. He said the, Bere or the, yeah, the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians because they, they looked at the scriptures with an open heart. We're supposed to look at the scriptures with an open heart. But the key is, he said they checked the scriptures daily to see what Paul was preaching was true. So they're going to check the Apostle Paul. They need to check all things. There was this re uh, recent, uh, we're in the 500th year of the Reformation of Martin Luther, which will be on October 31st, Halloween of this year. It was 500 years ago that the Reformation was started that created this, this schism between the Protestants and the, and the Catholics. What a wicked, wicked. Over 8 million people were killed in the name of religion. And uh, that's exactly what it was, is religion is not love. You don't kill in the name of love. You, you don't kill. You, it's, it's religion. Uh, anyway, the, Paul or uh, Martin Luther had a, a, a writing that was just found uh, about six, seven months ago. In one of his writings, he says, I don't believe the apostle Paul was right in his teaching that the church has not replaced Israel in Romans 9, 10, and 11. I just put my hands on my, are you kidding me? It's a man. He's a man. He started out with a great reformation that it is by grace, but he, he changed it and he went down a path that is not right. We trust in only one thing, and that is the living word of God. And to go back and say something is God breathed, that Paul was wrong and you were right because you think you're smarter than what the gospel author said. Yes, God has a purpose for Israel. He's always had a purpose for Israel. Paul nails that in 9, 10, and 11. And unfortunately, that doesn't fit replacement theology's doctrine. Replacement theology, again, for those who don't know, is a very uh, blaspheming teaching that the church has replaced Israel, so Israel has no, no, no uh, reference in uh, worldly events anymore. That uh, opens the door to persecution of the Jews. We see that happen in the Holocaust, that, it was the, that, that, that the church was behind it. The church knew about it. The church stood still in the name of God, the wrong, 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 wrong. It is just absolutely sick that these things and these atrocities happen. So we need to know the word of the living God. He is the only truth, and that is through his word. Know his word. Do not to forget to entertain strangers. For doing so, you have unwillingly entertained angels. We've probably heard that many times in our upbringing, that uh, uh, the God sends his angels in the form of men we don't know, and, and we have to be uh, alert because of those angels. And many times people have t told about miraculous things that happened to them where somebody came and, open up a door that they wouldn't have gotten or saved their life and just disappeared. And that is exactly the Lord bringing his holistic angels. They're all around us. They were in a spiritual realm. There's Satan and his demonic demons versus God and his holy angels fighting the spiritual battle. Over what? Over us. Over what we're going to do. That's what angels are for. They're messengers. They're to cheer us on to help us so that we know the way, the truth, and the, and the, and the way of the Lord through Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul says, put on the full armor of God. Take the offensive weapon of the sword and the, inner, and, and the, and the prayer being the uh, carpet bombing of the enemy. We need to know the word so we can fight the spiritual battle. Remember the prisoners have changed, if, if chained with them, those who have mistreated since you are yourself in the body also. So the, all, the author, or all the authors of the, uh, the, the disciples were all chained at some point in time, John and Patmos, Peter uh, going, almost going to his death, James going to his death, 
uh, over and over and over again, we see that they were persecuted. Polycarp burned, uh, burned at the stake. Over and over and over, we see them persecuted for the name of the, of the Lord, put in prison. Persecution is happening in Christianity all over the world, and we don't notice it as much in, in the United States. We need to stand up for persecution. We have to stand up for the prisoners who have been put in prisons unwrong, wrongly. And we also have to stand up for those who've been put in there for their own, their own uh, 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 things that they've done of the flesh. There's forgiveness with love. There's forgiveness. And we don't look down on anybody, no matter what they've done in, the li in their life. We are all sinners and we've all fallen short of the glory of the Lord. And we need to lift everyone up in love. We don't look at somebody down because they're in prison. We don't look at somebody down because they made a mistake, a, a grave mistake. Some people make mistakes every day and we're to lift them up in love and, and pray that they repent and come back into the body or come to the body of Christ. That is the light. If they're going to continue in the sin nature, then the scripture tells us to keep, us, to keep them at an arm's length so they don't impact the church, the leaven through the church, but, and pray for them. Everything we do is in love. Because uh, uh, as he said, you were mistreated yourself. Verse 4, marriage is an honorable, honorable among all and bed undefiled but fornicators and adulterers theos will judge god's law is god's law his precepts his commandments about holy matrimony are truth his truth has never changed as, as the author is going to say jesus christ is the same today as he was yesterday and he was it will always be meaning the heavens and the earth will fade away but the word of god will never fade away the god's word is true today as it was in genesis 1. And it is true today as it will be in Revelation 22. It is outside of time and space and it has gone from generation to generation, sin nature to sin nature, from king to king to nation to, that tries to rage against the Lord and is anointed. It stands tall. That's the only thing in all this world that stands tall. And we are not to say, oh, that's just not for today. That was out, that, that God's word doesn't apply today. Well, I like this one, but I don't like that one. We had a pro political uh, political person run for president, and their and their daughter said, "I well, I joined, I, I dropped out of the church because I I don't believe in the, uh, that part of the church anymore. That offends me. The word of the Lord is supposed to offend you because it's truth, and the truth is the only thing that can set you free. And sin is real, and sin is knocking at the door. And if we say sin is acceptable, we're lying. We're lying to ourselves. We're lying to others. But more importantly, we're lying." that the word of God is not the truth. This is truth. Whatever it says, you stand on this hill. This is your sword. This is your truth. If you're persecuted in the name of the Lord for his word, so be it. Our home is on the high, and where we're going is glorious. Remember what Jesus says to the church of Philadelphia. You never deny my name. You never deny my word. My word. The, Lord, the world looks at you in meek. But I have the keys of David, the door that no one can shut and the shut that no one can open. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I have a place for you in my new Jerusalem. Stand the test. Stay strong to his word. His word never fades away. Let your conduct be co without covetedness. Don't covet other things. Be content with what the Lord has given you. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said... I will never leave you nor forsake you. How beautiful is that? As you're talking about Deuteronomy 31, 6 in the Torah. I will never leave you or forsaken you. You're, you're mine, my child. You commit yourself to me. You give me your heart, your soul, and your mind. I will never leave you or forsake you. And those dark days that you think I lost, that, that I left you, it's like that, 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 that picture that we, we see in, uh, all over the place where the two sets of footsteps on the sand. That's where I carried you, my son. That's where I carried you, my daughter. I'm always with you no matter what you see in, the, in your eyesight. I am the great I am that I am. I will never leave you or forsake you. You can take that promise to the bank. It's his word. Even though it looks dark, light will be shining in the morning because he's got it. And remember, Romans 8, 28, all things, not some things, all things work to the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So we trust in him in all things. Praise his name. Verse 6, so we may boldly say, the Jehovah is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm, 118, or Psalm 18, 6 and 7. Hey, this is so true. And the Lord has had to put a lot of faith in my heart and trust through my trials and tribulations to get me to the point 
where I can honestly come out and say, what can man do to me? They've done everything they possibly can. They've tried to persecute me for the name of Jesus Christ, persecute this church. They try to blackmail this church. They've tried to do this, that, and the other thing. Satan has thrown everything he possibly can at us. I've died twice. I've been, been stopped by the IRS to be a 501c3 ministry. But we have overcome because of the name of the Lord. What can man do to me? They can only kill me, and I know where heaven is. I know where my home is, and it's glorious. It's beautiful. So we have no fear. Finish the race. As Paul says, finish the race. We have a will to do the Lord. Finish it, because no matter what happens, the Lord has it, and he's our helper, and I will not fear. I will not fear because he makes my steps pure, as, as David said in the Psalms. What can man do to me? They can't do anything to me. God is sovereign. Man is just a flower fading, gone. Yes, they might think they have the power of the, of, of the world today, but the power is very, very short, and God is opening up the exposure of all things in the world today. Praise his name. Verse 7, remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of Theos to you, whose faith follow concerning the outcome of their conduct. Follow the word of the Lord. Be trustworthy. Have a mentor in the spirit of the Lord. It's, good. it's okay to have a mentor. I've had many mentors growing, uh, growing in my spiritual walk. Uh, from uh, Lon, who was one of my first ones, who took me uh, uh, to Israel. I was baptized in the Jordan. Uh, he has a big ministry in, on, the, on the East Coast uh, to, through uh, Perry Stone to uh, Grant, Grant Jeffries to uh, Warren, uh, Dr. Warren Warsby, showing me the, the patterns of the, um, of, of, of the prophets. Uh, I think I mentioned Perry Stone has been a very big influence. He baptized me in the Holy Spirit. Um, Chuck Missler has been a really big influence on, on my learning. But all through these teachers, no matter who they are, you got to check, check the scriptures daily to make sure what they're saying is true. No matter who they are, no matter it's Billy Graham or whoever it may be, check the scriptures because we are just men and men teach. And you, the truth is is, is through the word of God. The Holy Spirit is true, your, your true teacher. So Acts 17, 11 applies. Check the scriptures to make sure it's true. And here's so important for what we've said. Verse 8. This is something you can highlight in your Bible to anyone that says, well, I don't truly believe that the, the scripture is, the, is, is that way for today. God doesn't change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus doesn't change. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the living word of God. It tells us in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. Jesus is the word. He is the literal living word of God. So he is the same yesterday, meaning in Genesis 1 and, and be, be, before the beginning of time in John 1.1, 1, 1, today and forever. The word of God will never go out. So this nonsense where people and their own uh, ideology or their own intellect, or their own theology for doctrine, or whatever the reason is to change things, because, well, we don't think that applies today. Well, you're not the author of the Word. It tells us two times in the Scripture, do not add to or take away the words of this book. Deuteronomy 4.2, Revelation 22. Anyone who adds to or takes away, I will add to the plagues of the book of Revelation, meaning the tribulation. And anyone that continues to add to or take away the words of this book, I will remove your name from the book of life. That's a pretty stern warning. It's his word. If he is the author of the word. We are to obey, not to be an editor. We are not to take a, a highlight going in there and say, well, I think I'm going to change this doctrine for this particular reason. Every time man changes it is for a man-made purpose. God's word stands strong. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take it to the bank. Do not be carried about with the very strange doctrines. He's tell, warning us that these strange doctrines will be coming. There's strange doctrines all around us. You see, uh, John Calvin and, and uh, Luther uh, were Catholics, uh, were on the Re Reformation. They started to go the right way and started their own uh, sect of, of their own doctrine. And man has just made doctrine after doctrine after doctrine. You've got to ask yourself, if you're in a denomination, where did this denomination come from? Who started it and why? And why? what's the difference between this, this, this uh, doctrine versus the truth of the living word? And why do we need to call ourselves that? In the beginning church, the church was called the way. It wasn't until Antioch that they called them Christians. And they called them Christians to try to mock them. And that was always called the way. There's always been one church and Christ is the head of the church. So when you see the church all over, when Paul went to the church, 
It was a church of Ephesus, or it was the church of Thyatira, or it was the church of Colossae, it was the church of Philadelphia. It wasn't a separate church. It was the church they met in the home, one church, one God, with Jesus Christ the head, and we the body. It was just a physical area that they would go to. They were all of one, one sound doctrine, which is the word of God. You want to be in a denomination? That's fine. But know what the denomination means, know what the traditions are, and seek the word of the Lord and, and see what the truth is, because the only truth is in the word of God. If it can't be supported by two witnesses in the word of God, it's not of God, and we need to be following God's word. Why would you want to listen to man anyway? When has man ever got it right? Man will never get it right. The only one that's got it right is Jesus Christ. And he died because we couldn't get it right. He died for our sins, past, present, and future, so that we could go to our eternal home with him by humbling ourselves and saying, I can't do it myself. I can't figure it out myself. I need you, Jesus, to take my sins away. And now that you've taken your sins away, I commit myself to what? Jesus says, if you love me, you will follow my word. If you love me, you'll be obedient. Obedient to what? His word, not man's word. God's word through Jesus Christ. He is the living word. And we have to hit that home. And don't let man say that I will teach you the Bible. Only 10% of the church today reads their Bible. That's, that's, that's sad. That is absolutely sad. You, the question is, are, are the 90% that are not reading their word, are they truly, truly the church? Or are they just a church in name? Are they a church in denomination? Being the name of a church and a denomination and sitting in a pew will not get you to heaven. There is no way. And if somebody tells you, you go and sit in the church, it's going to get you to heaven. You better check that person's doctrine out because it's false doctrine. The only way the scripture tells us is through Jesus Christ, having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and accepting him in your heart and your soul and confessing with your mouth that he is Lord and you commit yourself to him and he and you're going to be obedient to him. That's the key, being obedient to what? All of his commandments and precepts. Not what you think. It's not what we think. We didn't write it. We are an altar for those who have served the tabernacle but have no right to eat. We're an altar to a different sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ, not the sacrifice of the Levites, where the Levites went and sacrificed the blood of an animal and then went outside of the, outside of the camp and that was their meal. Jesus, we don't do that. Jesus has taken away the sin nature of the world and that is for his purity and that is for his glory and that is for us to be reconciled with the Lord through the God, the Father, most high, through the blood of the Lamb. For the bodies of those animals whose blood was brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. That's why Jesus was hung on the cross outside of the camp, exactly the way the Old Testament was where they took the, the, the burnt offerings after the blood had been shed. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate at, Cal at, at Calvary, or outside of Golgotha, literally. Therefore, let us go forth with him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Let's go outside of the camp, and that is the true sacrifice, the sacrifice of the King of kings, the Lord of hosts, who came in as the Lamb of God the first time, and now is our high priest it, that we, we go directly to. We don't need to go in a box and open the door and say, Father, I've sinned, do 700 Hail Marys and 52 backflips and give me $750 and we'll call it even. No. It is through Jesus Christ. He's our high priest. He doesn't charge for that. Yes, you're supposed to tithe. Yes, you're supposed to plus, bless godly ministries that are promoting the gospel according to Jesus Christ, not the gospel according to man's teaching. No, it's the gospel according to Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died according to the scripture, was buried and was rose again according to the scripture, and 500 witnesses saw that. That is the gospel of Christ that he told us from his own words. Preach the gospel from east to west to north to south, all over the world, to every creature. That's what we're supposed to do, and that is what you're supposed to bless and tithe into. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp, being beyond approach. For we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We don't have a city. We don't have a home. Our home is on the high. Our home is the new Jerusalem when it comes. That's what we're doing. That's what we're working for. And when we say work, it's after grace. Grace is taken in by the love relationship, and we work because of our love for him, not work because we have to earn our way. We could never earn our way. 
No way we could earn our way. That's why Christ had to pay the ultimate price. And now we are be obedient to do it for love, to do it for his purpose, do it for his glory. That's why the, the, the commandment, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. People say, well, that's swear word. Yeah, the swear word is, 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 is horrific when somebody uses that word, but that's not what it means. It means ambassadorship. Vain means me, being myself, doing things for God's, God's ministry for your purpose or your money or your, your, your way. No, that's vanity. They do not take the Lord's name in vain. We do it because of love for him that compels us to do this. It's love for him that compels us to do all things. And if love is not compelling you to do the will of the Lord, then you have a religion, not a relationship. And it's only through relationship with Jesus Christ that comes eternal life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But do not forget to do good and to share. Do good. Do love. Show bright a light for which sacrifices Theos is well pleased. He doesn't want your burnt offerings. He doesn't want your, 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 your fake fasting or your fake Lent or all that stuff. And another pope back in the days of Lent would, would give you a get out of Lent free card and you could eat any food you wanted as long as you paid X number of dollars as a, a offering to the church. So if you're going through Lent and this pope says, okay, if you don't want to go through Lent and you want to just get, you want to be a glutton, and it was basically a glutton tax. Here, is, here it is for X number of dollars. You can eat whatever you want during this period. That is absolutely just sickening that people are doing it for money, doing it for wrong reasons. You've got to question what are the traditions behind what you are going into that building for. It is the love of Christ only. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they have watched out for your souls. Those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Again, in Romans, it tells us to obey our government, obey those who are God puts in authority. He puts the Cyruses and he puts the Nebuchadnezzars in there for his purpose and his glory. As long as they are being uh, not going against God's precepts and commandments, we're supposed to honor our local government. We're having a rebellion here in the United States <coughs> today uh, because of our current president. We had one of, of the last president. And that's not being Christian to go out and, 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 and act for his demise. Either one of them. It is to walk in the way of the Lord, first of all, and honor those who God put into trust. Unless they go against his precepts and commandments, then you, then you don't obey that. Uh, so we have to be honoring that. God put them in place for a reason. And that doesn't mean they have to be godly men to do that. But God puts his people in place for his own purpose and his own reason. Uh, that's why Jesus said uh, when he was trying to be trapped about paying taxes to Caesar, he says, Who's na who, whose picture's on the coin? This is Caesar's. Pay Caesar what is Caesar's, pay God what is God. So give authority to who God put in, in, in civil office, but give ultimate authority to God Almighty because he's in charge of all things. God could take Caesar out like this. God could take a U.S. president out like this. God could take the leader of North Korea out like this. He does it all for his purpose and his glory, and we're called to be obedient to the Lord and all things. Not what we think in our ideology, not what we think in our politics. No, politics are put aside. Love of Christ is first. We are to love the way, the truth, and the life, and not being fights over politics. Pray for us if we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. Do you have a good conscience? The only way the good conscience has is through the Holy Spirit lifting you up, building you up, knowing the word of the Lord, and knowing that you've done everything you possibly can to do the things the way of the Lord. Are we still fallen vessels? Absolutely. That's where 1 John 1, 9 comes into play. It's Christians bar of soap. When we, we, we are, when we sin, he is faithful and true, and he will look down from heaven and, and, and forgive us our sins. We have a high priest, Jesus Christ. Go to Jesus and confess our sins when we're walking in the body of the church because we do sin and ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to convict us, to show us things that we're not even able to see that we need to get better and stronger every day because we are of sin nature even though we have uh, salvation for eternity until Jesus takes us home. It's a battle. we got to finish the race because Satan is trying to trip us up. He's creating landmines. He's creating IEDs to try to destroy us. Now may the Theos of peace brought up uh, of our Kairos, Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of sheep, though the blood of the everlasting covenant. 
He is the, pl the blood of the everlasting covenant, the covenant that God gave Jeremiah in Jeremiah 31, 31, that I will have a better covenant than the old covenant that will be greater, meaning his son is the blood covenant for us to have eternal life. Praise his name. And he is the good shepherd. And what does the good shepherd say? The only way is through the shepherd's gate. And he is the door. He is literally the door, the shepherd's gate. Uh, and if you get into our gospel teaching on the door, we can show you how literal the door means in ancient uh, for shepherds in, in Israel. He is literally a door. And you can get that in our gospel teachings. I appeal to you, uh, brethren, bear with the word of exhortation I have written to you in a few words. Know that our bro brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you, and he comes shortly. Great all those who rule over you. Greet all those who rule over you, and all the saints, those from Italy, greet you. Grace be with you. Amen. Grace be with each and every one of you, and live in the world for the Lord Most High. If I can't say anything in closing today, know the word of the Lord because this is the only thing that will give you truth in this world of fake news, fake government, fake scandal, real scandal, fake everything. The world is a fake, fake, fake world. There's only one truth, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is what sustains us in this world, and he's the only thing that will lift us up Give us this joy, peace, hope that the world cannot take away from you. As it says in Psalm 18, what can man do to you? God, you, you have Jesus Christ. Your home's on the high. You know where you're going. You, you can take it to the bank. Praise his holy name. And we pray that the, 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 the book of Hebrews has been a blessing to you. Until our next book, we will be entering into the book of, our, of the, the Acts of the Apostles starting next Thursday. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless.